Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the brand new, slightly refreshed 2022 Chevrolet Traverse RS with all wheel drive. And in this video, I will go around the exterior, point out some of the things that Chevy has updated for 22 and tell you why this may just be the perfect family rig. All right, so starting up front, Chevy's 3.6 liter V6 mated to a nine speed automatic transmission. Just like the Buick we tested earlier, this makes 310 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque. This particular one, as I mentioned earlier, is all wheel drive, which dings it for a mile per gallon on fuel economy. So it's 17, 25, 20 combined, somewhere along those numbers right there. But as I close the hood, you can really appreciate the updated refreshed styling that Chevy has baked into their 2022 products. Much more angular, much more clean and modern versus the outgoing models. So we'll start here with this uh, very angular grill it's very sharp points all along here and this rs trim gets this kind of black chrome look that looks really nice up front and blacked out plastic everywhere so the red and black combo you know here at gt garage talk I'm a little partial to red and black myself you get separated drls so led running lights up here and then your headlights down lower no fog lights on this model this RS is basically mid-pack. It's above the LS and the LT um, slides, slots below the Premier and top-of-the-line High Country. The uh, Premier would be more like the Buick that we tested last week, but this is a nice vehicle for your average consumer. Moving along to the profile of this one, really highlighting the RS and that rally sport, that sporty appearance, you get more black badging. So your Traverse is spelled out here on the door in black. Get black 20 inch wheels wrapped in Continental, Continental Eco Plus technology uh, tires to help get those uh, 17, 25, 20 MPG numbers. They are 255, 55 R20s. So they're a little on the wide side for what is labeled on the tire an economy or fuel efficient tire. So something to note there. Very similar profile to the Buick that we tested, but again, a lot more angular. So you get this body line that flows from the headlights all the way back here to the taillights, which uh, as we get around to the back, we'll talk about the upgraded taillights. Very clean design with the windows. Again, straight lines, very angular. Moving along to the back, I really like these new LED taillight elements. Uh, kind of goes with Chevy's new design language. So you kind of get this uh, snake forked tongue kind of look here on the side that flows around into a dual element unit here. Kind of stacked headlights, I really like it. More black. Uh, black Chevy emblem, black Traverse, black all-wheel drive, your RS badge on the other side. Now, this does have reverse camera back here. It's got your rear view camera, mirror camera back here. But interestingly enough, Chevy did not put the hatch release up here. If you're looking for it, it's actually down here. You get a power lift gate, which is very nice. And this particular one, as with the Buick we tested, comes with the dealer installed hard plastic uh, fitted very nice cargo liner and this is throughout the entire vehicle so you've got it front second and third row nice protection for uh, what is carpeted underneath you do get under floor storage with enough room for again my large backpack and some more and very nice storage here this particular one, being an RS, does not get the power fold third row seats. So you do have to manually pull a lever and fold them forward. But you can see they are 60-40. You got a little flap there to hide crumbs getting in between the folded seat and the rear. 
All told, it's a very nice cargo compartment, one of the biggest in the class. Definitely will hold a lot of gear and stuff. We've got a tailgate mounted close button, and that is the exterior. Why don't we hop inside and talk about some of the things I like in there for a family. All right, sitting in the driver's seat of the 2022 Chevy Traverse. It's a very comfortable, very present uh, feeling sitting out on the road. You get a nice high uh, seating position, you, very com confident view of the road. Can't really see too much of the hood in front of me, so kind of hard to tell exactly where that ends up there, but you can be confident of driving this around, much like the Buick. Again, it is one of the largest in its class, but it doesn't drive that way. We'll get to that a little bit later. Materials in here are nice. You know, you have soft touch up here and you've got multiple different materials. So this lower portion is much softer than this upper portion, but it is rubberized. It's not too scratchy. The leather on the steering wheel is nice. It's not Again, not quite as nice as the Buick, but Buick's got to be nicer. It's their more premium brand. Very comfortable grip. It's actually a little bit thicker than the Buick. Feels nice, kind of lending more towards that RS sporty nature of this vehicle. Get some gloss shiny black here as accents around the air conditioning vents, the center stack on the door here. You do not get memory seats on the RS, but you can get it on higher trims. Speaking of the RS, you get red stitching above the perforated leather here on the door as well as on the seats. You get power windows with auto up and down on the driver, power or auto down on all the rest, but uh, you actually had to hold it on the way up. You get nice little cubbies everywhere on the door and then your power lift gate, which is programmable. So you can actually set it here to three quarter and set how high it'll open or you can just leave it to max. Moving over to the gauge cluster. So you get traditional gauges. You get analog gauges for your tack, your speed, your fuel, and your temp. And you can get a nice small, but very functional center helper screen there that tells you speed, uh, posted speed, fuel, all that good stuff. Center stack is very nice. You get uh, Chevy's latest infotainment system, which works very well and an eight inch color screen. My favorite little feature is the hidden storage. So you push this button right here, get a little bit of hidden storage back here that stays locked when the vehicle is off because it is a power retractable screen. So nice little hidden feature there for some valuables. Uh, two USB-A ports here, auxiliary input, power right here, wireless charger, a couple of cup holders with a rubberized texture in the middle, traditional, gear selector here so uh, not your push button of the other uh, GM vehicles here is your drive mode so starts off in front wheel drive you actually have to select four wheel drive and it goes into your two different drive modes here so you can go tow haul uh, you can go uh, mountain traction off-road mode or your traditional four wheel drive or just front wheel drive also have your lane keep and your auto start stop button here next to the drive mode and your electronic parking brake is right there as well. The climate controls, very easy to use and operate. Dual climate up front, heated seats, all that good stuff. Center console is good, it's nice, it's wide. You have a removable section here so it's not just a giant cave. Not a bad front compartment for two full-size adults and I really like these rubber floor mats. Let's move to the mid-row and see what that looks like sitting behind myself. All right, so sitting in the second row of the Traverse, one thing you can truly appreciate is the seating position. Seats are firm but comfortable. It is a stadium style seat so I can actually see over the headrest in front of me. I'm 5'10", sitting behind myself, plenty of room, but these seats actually slide forward and back. So even if I was courteous to the person behind me and pulled all the way up, I still have enough room to make a long road trip here. Get a lot of nice cubbies and storage inside the door here so you get your cup holder because with the captain's chairs you get 
armrests here. Get a little cubby here for, you know, candy, whatnot, and some more storage here and back here. That would probably be good for a bottle back there in the back. I'm actually gonna move over to the passenger side to show you the floor mats that are interlocking that keep the floor nice and clean. You don't have to worry about the carpet. You've got your uh, control back here for your rear climate that you can also control from the infotainment screen, but change your temperature, fan speed, two USB-A ports, power port, and a little bit of storage underneath back here. One cool thing about uh, riding back here in the back is, huh, I said cool, it's Texas, air conditioning from the ceilings, and then you get your own fixed in place skylight back here. So it is a power retractable shade that is controlled by the front, so you have to be good to the driver or passenger up there to actually get some light back here, but that comes with the dual pane skylight there. Moving out of this seat, the passenger seat has a trick feature for parents with car seats. So there is a lever here on the side that actually tips and folds it forward so that you can move it forward to get into the back even if a car seat is in place. It also helps when installing a car seat. See, I've got the rear seat folded down here, but climbing in the back and Pulling this seat back, you can see I've got plenty of room. My seat, my knees are touching the back of the seat, but that's okay. I'm not planning on riding too far or too long back here. You get a cup holder, some storage, USB-A ports on both sides. The middle seat is a little on the narrow side, but you could fit a small adult here if you had to. And then Moving over to the other side, I gave myself a little more leg room here. I don't know if you can actually see, but uh, this is actually quite comfortable here. Getting out, you can either fold the seats forward or, since we do have captain seats, use that center pass-through. And we've already talked about the back, so why don't we hop behind the wheel, take this for a spin around town, and give you our final thoughts. All right, Gearhead, sitting in the 22 Chevy Traverse. Again, very comfortable seating position. This does have power slide, power recline, lumbar, all the comfortable things in it. I'm gonna turn the air down just a smidge. Uh, it is getting warm here in East Texas. One thing, I, I, I didn't realize how much I would miss this until it was gone, but just a standard <laughs> actual mechanical gear lever. So that's nice to have, but setting off in this very similar driving position driving style to the buick enclave we recently tested because it's based on the exact same platform it's very confident competent uh, solid very well put together and being that this is the chevy version um with the rs package it's geared a little more towards the sporty side versus the comfort, comfortable comfort side. I can talk. So yeah, uh, the ride may not be as plush and smooth as that Buick was, but I can tell you just from uh, this little bumpy road back here, it is not harsh, it is not firm, it does not feel like I'm driving a box with no suspension. It's a car-based platform, unibody construction, for those of you who know, and it reaps all the benefits of that. Like I said, very solidly built, shake and rattle free, and then that 3.6 liter V6, 310 horsepower, it'll pull, it'll move you down the road, uh, made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission that doesn't do a lot of hunting or searching for the right gear. It knows where you want to be and puts you in that gear and sets you off. If you find that it doesn't, there is a little rocker here on the side that you can put it in manual mode and uh, shift up and down from this little rocker here. This does have a tow haul mode on it as well, so it will tow, I believe it's up to 5,000 uh, pounds with the all the additional towing equipment, the cooling system, and all of that. So something to be aware of. 
drive mode selector. Uh, we have it in two-wheel drive, but you turn the knob once and it goes to all-wheel drive. Sitting in here, the view, like I said, sitting back at our filming location, it's a very upright, very commanding view of the road. I'm sitting above all the cars around me and smaller SUVs. So you get a nice top-down view of the road. I can see the hood. I can't see where it ends, but it's not a long hood, so I'm not worried about that view out the side is very good that c pillar is a little on the wide side but the view out that third window is relatively nice as well view out the back the rear window is large and wide the only thing in the way are the two headrests which you can flip down if no one's riding back there or just fold the seats down altogether you also have a rear view camera mirror so flip the switch here you actually get a digital readout of what's behind you because there is an additional camera fitted back there on the back of the vehicle that allows you to see a clearer wider field of view without head uh, headrests or heads or cargo getting in your way back there so that's very nice it takes a little bit of getting used to but once you do um, it's very easy and convenient to see everything back behind you so if you like technology there you go especially if you've got the rear loaded up with a bunch of cargo driving down the road it's quiet i mentioned earlier rattle free it, it's very quiet and well insulated traveling down the road here uh, nothing really to write home about good or bad it's just a very quiet family cruiser uh, the bumps aren't jarring or shaking me up in any way shape or form throttle response is good steering response is good it doesn't feel floaty I don't feel like I'm driving a boat I also don't feel like I'm driving a Camaro which with the RS badge you would think maybe a little bit sporty no it's an appearance package and that's okay uh, sitting in here I also have access to the skylight which this one actually opens you can tilt and open it or do a full open whereas the rear one which does have a power shade uh, is fixed in place but gives a little extra light back there in the back which is good because the rs comes exclusively with this black leather interior with the red stitching which looks really good complements the outside very well but it is a little dark uh, if you've got everything closed up, but there's a lot of light coming in from the windows too. So you have that. You might have noticed uh, the beeping just a second ago. That is from the collision avoidance feature. I was changing lanes into the turn lane and it saw a vehicle in front of me and wanted to alert me that there was something up there. It actually has a red light that illuminates on the windshield to let me know hey you might want to pay attention up here so that's a cool feature which you can actually adjust the gap at which that is reading the vehicle in front of you with this button here on the steering wheel and there are three different settings for that I had it on the longest setting so again why myself I was not panicked even though the vehicle was like hey there's something up there Driving this around in the city, it's very comfortable. Like I said, it's very easy to pilot, very easy to maneuver. Would do well in the school pickup line, which I'm about to go pick up my wife and my son to see what they think. Video of that coming out very soon. But all told, it it's everything you would expect from a modern three row SUV. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's got technology, it's got built-in Wi-Fi, it's got heated seats, it's got uh, tri-zone climate. I really like the roof-mounted air conditioning vents for the rear back there. You can honestly seat seven in here. I talked about how narrow that middle seat was in the back. You could fit three across back there, but they better be friendly. All told, it's a very comfortable ride nothing uh, that you nothing surprising in here nothing uh, that upsets the Apple cart in any way shape or form uh, I would highly recommend this if you are shopping for a modern three-row SUV because 
Um, like I said, it is one of the largest in the class and the cargo capacity of this one trumps some of the smaller entrance into the segment. Just something to keep in mind. We'll put all the dimensions down in the description below. Well, gearheads, at 50,000, this three-row SUV has just about everything the modern family would need. Space for seven, cameras all around for visibility, all the latest safety tech, all the latest in fuel economy for what is a very large vehicle. It's comfortable on the roads, sporty styling, everything you want from an SUV, right? Well, if you are in the East Texas area, I just want to say a huge thank you to our friends over at Pelche Chevrolet here in Tyler, Texas. If you are in the market, go see Franklin. Tell him GT Garage Talk sent you. As for me and this one, uh, I'm going to go take it to my wife and kid and see what they think. Stay tuned for that video.